Toronto. Ontario, as I was just telling you, is had conducted a draw, and there has been a big gap with Ontario draws, right? We haven't heard from them. The last other thing they did well, a couple of weeks back was the Masters PhD stream uh, draw. So this one is now 1,052 express entry candidates were invited in healthcare occupations to apply for provincial nomination. The CRS score range was 404 to 430. The eligible candidates obviously have to demonstrate that they want to live in Ontario and their primary NOC code should be one of the 42 listed NOC codes. The list of NOC codes is, is 42 long, right? So you can obviously go to head over to the Ontario's website, take a look at it. And, and But by and large, a lot of people are still troubled with the fact of why is it that the score was at 430. People whose score is more than the upper cutoff, they are the ones who are the most upset as to why are the scores at 430. What about 440? What about 450? What about 460, 470, 480, blah, 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 blah. But what is actually the reason for something like this is, well, you missed out because you did not create your express entry profile on time. It is not Ontario's fault. It is not IRCC's fault. It is, you know, you took your time to create your express entry profile. You came into the pool late and therefore you're not included. And the reason why you're not included is the last express entry draw that happened. Uh, that's where it is, right? There was an express entry draw, which was on 26th of October, which was healthcare occupations, which was a category based draw, right? 3,600 invitations were issued and the score went down to 431. So if you were a person whose score was 440, 450, 460, 470, 480, 490, 500 plus, 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 and you are getting upset as to why Ontario has not invited you, well, this is the reason why. If the last express entry draw was at 431, as far as Ontario is concerned, most of the people were cleared and it doesn't make sense for them to invite people above 431 or 430 for that matter, because most of them would have received their invitations anyways, right? Or in future, as in when IRCC conducts another category based draws, they would also get covered. So what Ontario then does is they invite people with a score ranging between 404 and 430. So know this, that the human capital priorities stream, whenever, uh, whenever they conduct a draw, uh, whether it's tech, whether it is uh, French, whether it is uh, healthcare occupations, their upper cutoff is always one point less than the last express entry draw cutoff for whatever the category would be. Now, I mean, obviously, now that we have category-based draws, earlier it was just the regular express entry draws. So because the category-based draws for healthcare was at 431, therefore, they have decided, or rather they decided to conduct a draw with 430 as a cutoff. Now, this is Brilliant. Why? Because it gives an opportunity to people who are at that lower range of the scores. Otherwise, they just do not have a chance, right? I mean, you would agree with. Uh, imagine if if all all the time IRCC was conducting a category based draws and the scores remained in 430 upward range, right? So what happens to people below that? They could be at below 430, or they could be between 404 and 430. Why? Because it could be the age, could such brilliant IELTS scores, could be uh, that their education they don't have a master's, right? Could be any of those in combination of these reasons or whatever that might be but that doesn't make them less qualified they could probably have much more qualification sometimes than the people who have a bigger higher better score it's just that the age is not on the side where they lose our points so this kind of so this way of doing the draws from from ontario actually provides an opportunity for a much larger segment in this case healthcare obviously it's a well-known fact that Canada needs healthcare professionals. They are in desperate need of healthcare professionals. This is also a case of one hand not talking to the other hand. Why? What am I talking about? Process to get your license to practice is so stringent that it demotivates a lot of people, right? I mean, it's a cliched statement when they say that doctors and engineers come and drive Ubers in Canada, right? Because the licensing process is so stringent, it's so long, it's so tedious, it's so cumbersome that People just do not have the patience to, to, to go through the whole process to get it. But people who do go through the process, people who have the patience, who have the perseverance, who have uh, this foresight, who, who, are, who are forward thinking, who are willing to go through the process, they realize that the fruits at the end of that process lucrative, if you want to call it. So definitely, if you are a person who was invited in the healthcare profession draw, then congratulations. And this is a great opportunity. Now, similarly, now that's, that's another thing which comes to mind, right? So obviously people are talking about tech as well why are tech draws regardless of the fact that ircc can also conduct category based draws and even then they 
are quite high with Ontario. IRCC has not yet conducted a STEM category draw in a number that is expected of them, or rather that was expected of them. The draw that they did conduct was of a meager 500 invitations. In the regular express entry draws, obviously uh, STEM category draws are also included. They get invited. Uh, but as far as Ontario is concerned, because the last draw was at 486, if Ontario is to conduct a draw today, if Ontario has to conduct a tech draw today, in my opinion, the upper cutoff would be 485 because that is the last STEM category draw. And with 485 as a higher cutoff, then they could go as low as depending on how many invitations they want to issue. Right. In this case, for healthcare, they wanted to issue 1,052 invitations. So they went down to as many people had that score. So they counted 1,052 people. What was the 1,052nd person score? 404. Okay, so 404 was the cutoff. Similarly, that will happen with tech draw. So if IRCC chooses to conduct a STEM category draw, whenever they do, and let's say they issue 3,000, 4,000 invitations. And at that point of time, if the cutoff then is at, let's say, 480 or 475 or 460 or whatever that cutoff is, I do not know what that would be. I think it's going to be on the higher 480s at this point of time because they do have 24 knock codes that are included. Now, if they are to conduct that STEM category draw, then whenever Ontario conducts their tech draw, it would be in tandem with that last STEM category draw. And that will then give opportunity to people who are below that score to then come and apply for nomination through Ontario. So I think in a way it's this is brilliant because it covers a much wider range of people within the pool uh, and gives an opportunity to different segments of different scoring. It's just that it's a waiting game. It's a patient game. If you do not have the patience, then it can take a toll on you. But if as long as you're willing to have a bit of patience all the time, just need to have a bit of patience, of course, put in your efforts, put whatever you do whatever you can from your side to improve your scores to improve uh you know your, your, your profile if you can add french brilliant add french become proficient in the language i know it takes one year i know it takes one and a half year but you guys are willing to come to canada as an international student where at this point of time as an international student there's a lot of despair the people just do not have much of a choice even those international students who came to canada two years back are now figuring out that it's not working out for them. So let's study French. So after having spent all that money in Canada in studying, right, because Canadian education is expensive. And then after having worked in, in not be kind of jobs, just so that they could get their Canadian work experience, they're still struggling and realizing that it's not working in their favor. And hence they have to now resort to French. So then in that case, if you have to resort to French anyways, then may as well do it while you're outside Canada, right? Mind you, it can add up to 62 points to your score. So instead of spending money on fraudulent agents trying to buy these job offers, which can create a problem, or uh, spending money on Canadian education or getting refused for study visa and then trying to figure out a way, French, spend a year and a half in that because French is not going anywhere. Even in the multi-year level plans, French category has been given advantage. It has been shown 8%, 9%, sorry, 6%, 7%, 8% year-on-year -year increase in the immigration quotas. Each province is being encouraged to, you know, uh, attract more francophones. Quebec is obviously always there. And as long as they keep encouraging more immigration of francophones to different parts of Canada, you will have advantage. Also, Saskatchewan, you can get up to 10 extra points for French. So huge advantage there absolutely give it your best if you can british columbia conducted on the 28th of november a draw invited 1185 candidates actually it's pretty big as a draw they usually haven't conducted such a big size draw but then this draw invited scores between 94 to 116 like 94 is a decent score because recently the scores had stayed quite high and these draws were for skilled worker, international graduate candidates as well. And the province, again, invited 93 candidates in tech occupation with a score of 94. Uh, the other three draws were targeting early childhood educators, construction occupation candidates, and healthcare occupation. Uh, for people who do not know, British Columbia, all the PNP programs, you need an employer who is going to support you for a job offer. Without that, you are not eligible to apply. Manitoba, on the 30th of November, invited 148 candidates through the skilled worker stream who can demonstrate they have a close relative in Manitoba. They required a score of only 609. This was the first such draw where the advantage was directly given to people who have a relative in Manitoba. You have a score of 609 and above, 
you are in or rather you can then you will be sent a LAA letter of advice to apply. They also invited 82 candidates in the international education stream and 38 skilled worker overseas with a score of 720. Prince Edward Island, 30th of November, again, also conducted a draw inviting 69 candidates under the labor and expressory streams. I know PEI is again promoted by a lot of agents out there as aapki file lodge kar denge Prince Edward Islands in PNP. But to be very honest, Prince Edward Islands always concentrates and encourages only people who are inside the province, not even inside Canada. People who are inside the province who have already shown intention of wanting to live, reside, work in Prince Edward Islands, they are encouraging those people. And the nominations are being given to those people. So in the last 12 months, they have invited 2,528 candidates through their PNP streams. Go back. Uh, there was an Arima draw on the 16th of November inviting 1,210 candidates. No occupations were targeted. But the minimum score was 609. The people required a level 7 of your French language, which is, I wouldn't say it's high because people, if you can achieve 7, then you pretty much have a good chance to get through anyways. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining in. I really appreciate you having taken the time. I wish you all the best and I hope we will see you again soon.